Well, welcome to Parish Prayers and Beyond. And looks like we've <laughs> looks like we've gone beyond. Uh, no, actually, I was told that uh, until I cleaned my office, uh, I really did not need to do these in my office. <laughs> so here we are in the prayer garden at the First Baptist Church, and you can hear somebody. Sounds like they're mowing their lawn. Uh, Hopefully they're doing it by themselves. Uh, but uh, anyway, I wanted you to know, I did another unscientific survey on Facebook and I asked this question, have you grown closer to God during the recent days? If so, what did you do to draw closer to Him? Well, I got a few responses, not a lot, but a few. Uh, and uh, the first person I got, it says, uh, this person says, I have spent more time in prayer the past four weeks than usual. I've also read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and am currently on John. Well, all right. Uh, another person says, I have prayed and I prayed. Another person says, I have prayed every day. I thank him for letting me wake up, my health, my children grandchildren. Another person said, I get up praying and go to sleep praying. Seems like I am praying all day too. I know God answers prayers. And then one, 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 the, the last person that uh, responded that I was able to put, on, uh, put this together with, uh, this person says, yes, it's crazy how busy you let your life get and put prayer on the back burner. I can honestly say I have never prayed as much as I've. <laughs> uh, I have never. I can honestly say I have never prayed as much as I've prayed this week. I hope I never get complacent with my prayer time again. Uh, being outside, you're going to hear some horns, I guess. Uh, but boy, listen to that. A lot of that had to do with prayer, drawing close to God in prayer. Uh, so that's what we're hearing here. As, as a pastor, the flock for which God has placed me as shepherd, the, the, the flock that God has given me uh, to care for, uh, is known as the First Baptist Church of Winsboro. But I also care for those outside my church family. I, I, you know that, many of you know that. Uh, because as I read the Bible, I see that everyone matters everyone matters not just the church members at the church i serve so this evening i i i want to talk to you and first baptist church members about a relationship with the lord this wednesday of holy week uh the the, the week before easter sunday did you know it was traditionally called spy wednesday I thought about, yeah, dressing up in a tux and uh, having my gun and uh, my slick, you know, sports car, but uh, yeah, I couldn't find the sports car uh, and couldn't find a gun either. <laughs> well, anyway, it's, it's traditionally known as Spy Wednesday because it was on Wednesday before the crucifixion that Judas conspired to hand Jesus over to the authorities and he was paid 30 pieces of silver, the Bible tells us. Well, when I think of Judas, I think of a man who was deceived. He was deceived by the devil. Now, I know also he was a part of God's plan. God had a plan to use him in this way and to offer up uh, Jesus to the authorities. Uh, I, I mean, at the Last Supper, we know that Jesus knew that one of his disciples was going to betray him. We know he knew it was Judas. Uh, but the plan was for Judas to be that one. All the disciples asked, you know, they, Jesus said that, you know, one of you tonight will betray me. And all the disciples were like, is it me? Is it me? And they panicked and they wondered. But we know that it was Judas. He did not really have much of a choice. For Jesus to be caught they needed to have soldiers who knew which one he was. I mean, when they showed up and, and, and there uh, were all these disciples, which one of them is Jesus? If these soldiers did not know Jesus, then they needed to be tipped off and Judas 
uh, said, I'll do it. I'll, I'll tip you off. I'll kiss him, and the one I kiss is the one uh, that you need to arrest. And so that's what happened, and they carried Jesus away. Well, how does this apply to you and to me? How, how does this affect our day-to-day -day living? Well, are we true followers of Jesus? Or are we just fans of Jesus until he does something we don't like? And then we just kind of walk away. Are we true followers of Jesus? How close are you to Jesus? Are you like these disciples that hung on his every word and followed him? Or are you like Judas, just a fan, just kind of following along, but not totally following as he should? If you've made a decision to follow God, to ask Him to come into your heart and to ask Him to forgive you of your sins and to be in charge of your life, then I hope that you're walking close to Jesus. I hope that's what you're doing. I hope you're walking with Him daily. Maybe recently you've drawn closer to Him. Maybe recently you've drawn closer during the days of the virus. Let me encourage you to continue to walk with Him. Continue to take time to talk with Him, to speak with Him. Continue to draw near Him. Remember the Bible tells us if, that God said, if you will draw near to me, I will draw near to you. And that's a, Cy Robertson always says, that's a fact, Jack. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's true. If you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. And that's a promise from God's Word. This close relationship that you're having needs to be continued. It needs to be continued. Even after this virus goes away, even after we get back to some kind of normal situation, we need to be willing to continue to walk with God, to continue talking with Him. Don't stop. Continue speaking to Him. God truly desires to have an ongoing relationship with you. He really wants that. But that cannot happen if you never speak to Him. You can't keep up a relationship with someone unless you spend time with them. So spend time. Continue to spend time with God. So if you find yourself in these days praying more than you ever have, keep it up. Keep speaking to God. Allow Him to guide your words and to guide your life and to guide your actions. Allow Him to do that. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You. Dear God, we thank You for this day, this Wednesday, this Wednesday during the week of Holy Week, this Spy Wednesday. And dear God, allow us, help us, Encourage us, enable us, empower us to be disciples, people who follow you, people who walk with you daily, people who do not just, when the virus disappears, think, oh, well, everything's back to normal and we're fine. We don't have to pray and talk to God as much. God, help us to understand that we need you every day and that we need to talk with you. We need to share with you what's on our hearts. Oh, please, dear Father, help us to realize how important it is to walk with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Oh, by the way, uh, today uh, my son asked me, uh, he, he said, can, can I have a bookmark? I wept. I thought certainly after 16 years he would know my name is Craig. Number one dad joke for today, just for you. Y'all have a good evening. And remember, pray for your neighborhood, pray for your community, pray for those who are in the hospital with this virus. Pray that God will bring healing to their hearts and to their lives. Pray for the doctors, pray for those attending to them. Talk to the Lord. Spend time talking with Him. Until next time, remember, you matter to God and to us at the First Baptist Church of Winsboro.